Well, hello everyone. It's uh, Brandon from VK Milling and Hardwoods here in fairly chilly. It's about 30 degrees, give or take. Um, about zero C. Um, here in southeast Tennessee, and it has been rainy and kind of miserable. Um, usually, I, I prefer the colder weather to work in. Um, I'm just a cold weather person. And uh, I'm usually much busier in the winter time than I am in the summertime. So I'll, I'll sit out here and work while it's eight degrees outside and I'll be perfectly fine. Um, but uh, the rain has just been off and on, off and on, off and on. I come out here and get 10 minutes worth of work done and then the bottom falls out again and it's been ridiculous. So, uh, one of the things that, uh, I'm going to do today is, uh, an upgrade to the mill. Uh, I wish that I could take credit for this, uh, but I can't. Uh, this was posted by a gentleman on the, uh, Woodmiser, uh, Facebook group, uh, an upgrade that he did, uh, and his name I'm drawing a blank on right this second but I will make sure to give him credit uh, in the video at some point in time somehow I'll give him credit for it um, but what it is is we're gonna add a second battery directly to our hydraulic system now there's a lot of folks out there that will run a jumper from their contact strip on the side to the saw head so that they can actuate their hydraulics at any time they want to regardless of the position of the saw head and uh, I've never wanted to do that uh, yes I've been in plenty of positions where I needed to try to manipulate a log ever so slightly where you know I needed to move it or roll or not necessarily roll it but slide it over just that extra little bit or something or it wasn't clamped perfectly um, and that kind of stuff and I've had to back out of cuts to, to, to deal with all that um, but I have wedges and I deal with it that route um, I, I've never thought that I would like that full-time actuation of the hydraulics now this will actually give that ability to actuate the hydraulics no matter where the saw head is. Um, however, uh, the, the actual upgrade is not for that itself. The upgrade is to supply more power to the hydraulic motor, hopefully increasing the speed at which the hydraulics actually move. Um, and that is, to me, one of the biggest drawbacks of like the LT35 hydraulics is they're just slow. They really are. Um, and there's really not much that you can do about that unless you step up to like a Super 40. Um, the Super 40, the 50, and the 70, the hydraulics are immensely faster than the hydraulics on this mill. And I've gotten in here and I've tweaked a little bit here and tweaked a little bit there uh, to try to get the hydraulics to move faster and none of that's really worked. So what I'm going to do today is I've got a battery down here, brand new. Uh, we're going to toss that in there. Uh, we're going to test it out, make sure that everything works. I've got uh, some cables and a fuse and some other stuff. I'm going to show you how to go through, uh, how to set all that up. Uh, everything that I've got is an off-the-shelf product. Um, I'm not having to fabricate anything for this, uh, thankfully. Uh, I didn't have to get specialty cables made. Uh, the two cables, the power and the ground, uh, are both off-the-shelf from the auto parts store. The only thing that is a sort of specialty item is this. And I'll show you as we go more into detail. Um, this is just a, a fuse holder. Um, and it's for 100 amps, and I really wanted to put a fuse between the battery and the solenoid um, so that if there was 
you know, some kind of shock, if there was some kind of, uh, you know, uh, jump to ground or something, just that little bit extra protection. It wasn't expensive. Uh, the holder itself was like 20 bucks and the fuse was like $5. So $25 in, it just adds a little bit of protection between the battery and the solenoid and, and what have you. So uh, I'm going to show you how to put this on uh, and how to put the battery in. But the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to establish um, some parameters for our testing. And, or at least a control for our testing. So the first uh, test that I'm going to do is I'm going to, while the motor is not running, uh, actuate the hydraulics on just battery power from the primary battery. We're going to lift the loading arm from all the way down on the ground up to its max height, and we're going to time that. And then we're going to drop that back down. Then I'm going to start the mill, let it run for about 30 seconds or so, and then we'll time uh, how long it takes to lift those loading arms again. And then we'll shut everything off. I'll move the saw head out of the way so that there's no power going to anything in this box. And then uh, we'll put the new battery in and hook that all up. And then we'll run those tests again and see if we get any speed increase whatsoever. If we do, fantastic. If we don't, well, at least I'll be able to operate the hydraulics without uh, having to have the saw head in place. So, uh, for the first test, I'm going to move the camera over so that you can see the loading arms. I'm going to actuate that, lift it all the way up, then all the way back down, start the saw head, wait lift it up, back down, we'll time all of that, um, and then we'll go through with the installation. So I'm gonna try to get positioned here. So you can see the lever down in the bottom right-hand corner, and over here, you'll see the loading arms come up. So test one. All right. <laughs> Off cut piece over here in the way. Okay, so now we're going to start it up. We're going to do the same test again.
been running a little rough this morning. I had to come in and, and, and cut up a few 8 by 8s for a customer, and it wasn't running very good this morning at all. Uh, so when the temperatures drop, i got to adjust the idle a little bit. Um, it does normally run better in the cold, uh, but I don't know if it's the drastic change in temperature because it was like 75 degrees the other day or if I need to actually do a tune-up, which I just did a tune-up maybe 50 hours ago on this motor. Uh, I do know I came in yesterday and started it up, and it was running for a minute, and the, uh, the alternator belt was slipping, I mean, just squealing out of control. And so I had to stop and adjust the alternator to put some tension on that belt. So, I mean, weather affects everything. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the camera over and give you guys a bird's eye view of what it is that I'm doing. And don't mind the mess. One of the things that I had intended to do when I came in today was to actually clean. And uh, yeah, that didn't happen because it started raining. Uh, it's not the best view in the world, but it's going to do. Now again, I don't have to disconnect the battery up there because the saw head is off, is off the contact strip. So there's no power in here. So as you can see, nothing's happening at all, which is great. So uh, first thing I did was I removed the panel, the top panel cover, uh, to make sure that there was room for the size of battery. Um, the proper battery size for this is a 58R. Um, that's what we're going to be putting in here. There's just enough room for it to clear in this area. Uh, so I took that panel off and now I'm going to take this side panel off right here. Um, the top panel is held on with some 9 16 inch bolts. Same thing with the side panel. It's 9 16 They should come right out. Now, don't let this drop on your toes. Even if you're wearing steel toe boots, it's still annoying. If you're not wearing steel toed boots, um, why aren't you wearing steel toed boots? <laughs> All right, so the side panel's off. As you can see, I can get in there with my hands, move around. The first thing I'm going to do is take this battery, stuff it in there and make sure that I can get everything to fit properly. All right, that looks like it'll work right there. Um, I actually prefer that it go all the way to the back, but I'll have to turn it around to do that. So everything I just did. And truth be told, I'm actually making this a little bit more difficult on myself than I could, than I should be. I could always take this compartment off. This has your trailer battery in it. I could take that off and it'd give me some wiggle room, but I just, least amount of crap that I've got to do, the better. Especially for something that I'm not entirely sure whether it's going to work properly. And I'm not entirely sure whether it's going to actually increase the way I want it to increase. All right, battery's in and it slides over. Quite nice, actually. That'll work. So I have two cables. A cable for the hot and a cable for the negative. The negative, wait, let me see, hold on. Which one is which? All right, this is the hot, this is the negative. Um, 
I think the negative is actually a 16 inch cable and the positive is an 18 inch cable or vice versa. I really don't think it actually matters. They should both fit. They're the same, they're the same cable, they're just different lengths. So this is one gauge and this is one gauge. Now these cables, I think were like 18 bucks a piece. Um, they are pre-made. My local auto parts store here, you know, have them sitting right on the shelf. So I think what I'm gonna do is the shorter one will be the power cable. And now it's starting to rain again. Ha, well, we'll see what happens. Uh, the longer one will actually be the ground. So this is gonna go from the ground or rather from the negative terminal to ground, which will either be this is where I'm debating whether or not to attach the ground here next to the solenoid or to utilize the ground that's already over here for the pump itself. Um, and I might actually utilize the one for the pump itself. There's really not... Mm, there's really not enough bolt to do that though. So that could be an issue. Um, this is a ground, but it doesn't actually look like that's a metal to metal contact. I don't really have enough to get it over to one of these bolts over here. There's another bolt right here underneath this ground. I could use that one, but I would just need to, uh, clean the paint off so I can get some metal to metal contact. I think that's the one that I'm actually going to use though. But the ground is the last one we do. We're gonna do the, uh, the hot first. Yeah, okay. So, the hot or positive is gonna run from the battery to the lowest post on the solenoid. So if you actually trace this wire right here that comes out, it goes down underneath um, your block, your actuator block, and out the side, comes out over here, and that's what connects to the, co the, the copper power strip. So before we do that, we need to put our fuse in line. And so what this is, Take this out, set that to the side. That's our fuse. It's a 100 amp fuse. We'll set it right there. And this is a fuse block. So this will hold that 100 amp fuse. Um, the line from the battery will go in here. The line out to the solenoid will go in here. And that just, it adds a little bit of buffer. So when I tried to take this off earlier, it was a pain. Whip out one of our specialty tools here. There we go. See, I was squeezing it. Squeezing is the wrong answer. Crap, come on. The real trick is I just sharpened this knife. And that bad boy is sharp. So, trying not to stab myself or slit my hands open or anything because, you know. I've already had to go to the doctor twice in the last two weeks. So I prefer to not have to do that again. There we go. Ah, okay. Now that comes apart. Just like that. So, those are hex head screws that are in there. 
Let's see if I got the right size down here. So we're back. I couldn't find any of my small bits that were the right size. It's clearly... metric but what metrics there we go all right so that's a three millimeter metric size right there boom got it excellent so we're going to open this up it's a little uh plastic piece of tubing in there to protect it we'll drop that out and we're going to take this screw out and the reason we're going to take the screw out is we've actually got to take this collet right here out it, this is for a smaller gauge wire than the ones I have. What I have are, are one gauge. This is, I think, for like a, a four gauge or something along those lines. Anyway, too small for what our purposes are. We'll take that off. Do the same on this side. Drop that out. Drop that set screw out. Okay. I wish the machining in there was a little better. You see those rough edges where that was tapped out? That kind of sucks. See, if I manufactured something like this, I would bore and then bottom tap those holes first, then bore this hole out so that it would clean and deburr those uh, thread holes. That's me. Okay, next thing we've got to do, we've got to cut this in half. And before I do that, I'm going to make sure that this is going to fit properly. It does. Excellent. And then take it off. So essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to cut this act, this in half and then we're going to strip back about an inch on either side and stick it in there. And that looks like it'll be about in half. Oh, that cable is strong. Ah. I might have to go get my other wire cutters. Nope, there we go. You got it. So now, take my trusty Leatherman multi tool and try to squish that back into round. Like that. Whip my knife out again measure it off and we're going to cut eh, about three quarters of an inch of sheathing here all the way around doesn't have to be perfect just have to get it off of there so it's got that side done and we're going to do about the same on this side Voila. And then we will, I guess I could just do that by hand, just smush it back around. So, all right. So that goes, well, let's take a look at this. Hold on a second here. Actually, the collets in there work just fine think better than uh, not having them. So I'm going to strip just a tad bit more of this rubber off. Oh, that's just not going to do it. On this side we'll test it and see if I need to take some more off. Yeah, just a hair. Just that one. Do that. 
perfect. All right, so this one's perfect. I'm happy with that. This one needs just a little bit more. But there's nothing like taking your freshly sharpened knife and running it along some metal. Take a look at this. Oh yeah, that's nice. That works good. All right, so we'll go ahead and put this in there. And what we're gonna do is this cutout here lines up with where that set screw goes. Come on. Put that set screw back in there. I'm just going to tighten that down nicely. Not too tight. We're not going crazy with it. We're just holding it in place. All right, now we'll do the other side. that over it goes in there just like that and then our set screw goes in there pinch that together tighten it down all right it goes a little bit of a yank Make sure that uh, they don't come out. They don't. Sweet. So now what we're going to do is we loosen this top screw. Ah! Wipe that off. Loosen that one. And then these fuses are made so that one end slides in like that and then the other end just slides up. So I'm going to slightly tighten this one just a little bit, put some friction on it, and then put this one back on. I did not intend to actually take this off, but I didn't realize they were so short. tight now and that one's tight now all right so we should be good to go with this I'm gonna see if that'll slide over just a little bit there we go my OCD is going nuts right now see back in when I was in high school and I was doing like some car installations and car radio installations. We didn't really have kits like this. You had fuses, but you know, you just put a, a loop on the end of this one, crimped it on or soldered it on, and then a couple of bolts and voila, you're connected. Uh, I wish we'd had some really cool ones like this because this thing is, is really nice. You got a nice see-through window to see if that fuse is blown. That's awesome. So, what I want to do is actually want to twist this one. Twist it around like that. 
Well, twist it with the copper. There we go. So, uh, next thing we have to do is we're going to go ahead and attach this to the solenoid first, then we'll attach it to the battery, and then we'll do the ground. Now, it's very important to remember the wire coming out of the top goes to the motor. The wire coming in at the bottom, this is your solenoid, the wire coming in at the bottom is your power in. So you want to absolutely make sure that when you connect this, you're going to the power in on the solenoid. If you don't, you will regret it. Of that, I can assure you. Uh, so we need maybe a half inch. No, oh, that's way too small for a half. No, just right, half inch. We're gonna take this bottom one off. No, we're not taking it completely off. I'm just removing the nut to take it off. You want to make sure there's a blue wire that's behind this, um, I guess, one gauge wire. I can't see what it actually is. Um, make sure that doesn't come off. If it does, you got to remember to put that sucker back on there. Oh, man. There's some corrosion in there. Most of that's off. So now we're going to see how exactly we want to run this in here. I'm going to wait to put that plastic plate back on until my shenanigans here are done. Which might actually be creating more of a headache for myself. I don't know yet, but we'll see. I wish that they had actually had shorter wires, but this is what they had. Now, another important thing here is do not over tighten this nut. You want it tight. But if you strip this thing out, you're going to have a really bad day. Um, clean out our water droplets. Snap that back into place. Snap that back into place. All right. And then that... come down here just have to see how I want to route it there we go okay all right so that takes care of that is that half inch yes half inch open that up just a little bit Get that knocked down on there. You're aware. That's on there, and I'll use my actual crescent wrench to deal with that. All right, so now move this out of the way. That. And I wanna to get to this nut right here for my ground. It's not half inch. Probably a 9 16 Oh look, it's a 9 16 
All right. Take that off. Make sure that that's not going to fall in there. Uh, I didn't bring any sandpaper or anything out with me. So we're just going to go caveman style on it. I'm just going to scrape the paint off. Take care of that. All right. So now I need my ground cable. Here's my ground cable. And we are going to stick that on there. And I know you guys may not be able to see what it is that I'm doing, but I'll show you. I'll bring the camera around and show you in just a minute here. Should be able to slide this battery in here. Excellent. So it goes all the way to the back now. And what I'm going to do after I've tested all this and made sure that this actually works, I'm going to either fabric cobble something up uh, to hold that battery in place or um, I'll bungee that sucker in there somehow. But for now, we're just testing it. So it should all be connected up. And we're getting juice. And she's lifting. And she's moving. All right. So now, I'm going to move all this crap out of the way. back up just a little bit here all right so you can see my lever and you can see the loading arm over there and we're going to time it without the motor running without the other battery connected Okay, back down. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring the saw head back so that it's in contact with that copper strip and then we'll test it again. And then the final test would be with the, the saw head actually running. Let's make sure that you can see everything. All right, here we go. All right.
All right, and we're going to start her up. So here's what I'm going to say. Just from having run this mill for so long, it feels like, and I think of how to phrase this. So it feels like the controls are snappier. Like when you pull a handle, it snaps the action just a little bit faster. I can absolutely tell the tow boards are faster. I mean, they jump. The loading arm, until I go back and look at the footage and, you know, actually measure out the time, I'm not sure of. It feels like it might be a little faster, but it could just be because I'm hoping that it is. Um, the clamp seems a little bit faster and the log turning arm eh, I don't know it, does, it could be might not be what I could do is uh, disconnect that battery and then test the clamp the loading arm the tow boards without a battery or without that battery connected and then run that test again. I might actually just go ahead and do that. That sounds like a good idea, Brandon. Um, it is, however, starting to rain again. So, at the very least, I'm going to pack up my tools so that I can make a mad dash inside if it starts pouring down. So, let's see if we can get and make sure that we have a good, 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 good picture. Okay. Couldn't tell if it was recording or not. Okay. Uh, first test will be the hydraulic clamp, or the clamp, bi-directional. So I'm going to test... It should be all the way out. Okay, it's all the way out now. I'm going to test the time it takes it to go up. And then once it's up, the time it goes from all the way out to all the way closed. And 
back down. All right. Second test. Hydraulic log turner. Um, I'm going to put the, the side supports all the way down. And then we're going to test from the time it takes them to raise all the way up to the time the log turner comes all the way up and is in its maxed out position. Okay, and go. All right, far toe board up and then down. Nearest toe board up and then down. Okay, so now we're gonna hook that other battery back up and then we're gonna just do everything we just did all over again. There's no power going to anything. that folding we'll bring the saw head back and then we're going to do the exact same test again and then we'll time it so uh, this will be the clamp up and then all the way in This is the log turner all the way up from side supports down to full extension. All right. Uh, Further's tow board. nearest tow board. We'll do the same thing again with the motor running. don't know if you could actually tell or not. I'm really not sure. I'll have to look at the footage and, and see what the footage says. I definitely think that the tow boards are snappier and that they are moving faster. But whether the clamp is moving faster or the log turner is turning faster, I don't know. But it, more importantly, if it does anything for me at all, I would really like for the log turner to at least be getting more power. Um, one of the logs that I was turning yesterday was a 36 inch diameter wide oak at 12 feet. And uh, it, it wasn't happy about trying to, to, to rotate that sucker. Um, it was not happy about doing it at all. I was having to use both the log turner and the clamp in conjunction with one another to get that flipping log to turn. 
Um, but we'll see. Like I said, we'll have to edit the footage and take a look. Uh, I'll bring you around this side so you can see inside of the, the compartment and see what I did. Okay. So, our battery is sitting nice and nestled in here. It's not making contact with anything crazy underneath here. Um, you can see that's our negative terminal is not hitting underneath here. It's our positive terminal comes around, goes into our 100 amp fuse right there, turns and comes back to the bottom post, bottom post, bottom post of the solenoid. Um, the ground or the negative comes out right here, sorry, right here, goes around and then goes to this bolt in the side. This is the ground for your motor, or for the uh, hydraulic motor itself. Uh, you can see that. So this is the hydraulic pump slash motor itself. This is your reservoir. And this is the ground for the pump. This is the ground for this battery now. Over here is the ground for the solenoid. I actually, I'm sorry. Let me correct that. Um, down here right here this is a switch this switch completes the circuit to the solenoid which allows it to actually activate so when you activate one of these levers you notice down here at the bottom see it activates that switch and that switch completes the circuit and then allows the solenoid to uh, provide power over to the pump um, that's your hydraulic filter. I just changed that out, uh, probably 20 hours ago. Uh, no, been longer than that, maybe 40 or 50 hours ago. Um, and then this is your trailer brake battery. Uh, what else? What else is in here that, uh, would matter to you all? <laughs> um, I don't know. Anyway, uh, I'm going to continue doing what I need to do. Um, until next time, stay safe, have fun. Okay, so like a dummy yesterday, uh, I forgot to do one of the, well, one of the most important tests uh, for comparison. Uh, and that is, I did everything except for testing all the hydraulics with the motor running and just the primary battery, not the secondary battery. So I'm going to go ahead and do that test right now. Um, hopefully I got enough gas in the machine. Um, oh, I was going to go get the gas tank and put some gas in it. Um, so yeah, uh, I've got a ton of work and stuff uh, at the house and I've got, you know, a burst water pipe to got to deal with. That's it. It's all the testing I've got to do. Um, I can't believe I forgot to do that yesterday. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of annoying. So uh, I'm going to hook that battery back up, uh, close up the compartment, and then get this video home and uh, 
splice it back into the main video.